Hi everybody, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Please help me out by pressing the thumbs up button, subscribing, sharing this video with others, commenting and dialoguing with others. Thank you everyone so much for the constant support. I really, really appreciate it. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some California private patrol operator exam revisions. There's been some revised testing that has been done and I have received a few complaints regarding my material. I will address the void in training. Um, at the same time, I also wanna discuss different ways on how you can qualify your experience as a patrol officer. So let's just say if you're in California, you wanna be a qualified manager and we'll talk about that in a minute. And you don't have a title of manager, maybe patrol officer or something like that. How can you, how can you gather, how can you prove that you have 2000 hours or that one year of management or administrative experience based on a category that based on a job um, title that doesn't have the words manager or or supervisor in it. So without further ado, let's begin. Uh, once again, I've, I've received some complaints about my material. It's outdated. Um, it does need some updating. This is the second edition. I finished this in 2018. It became um, a well-known study guide for the private patrol operator exam in California. Um, sold a lot, a lot of copies. Now I'm going to stand behind this book. Um, even if you had, so this is a second edition. If you had the first edition, which was published sometime 2015, 14, if you understand that material, you could probably still pass the current exam. And we're in 2024. We're going to 2025. You could still pass the, you could probably still pass the exam. Um, I leave all the comments open in the on the YouTube video as long as it's not defamatory I leave just about every single comment in um, there's been some comments like hey my materials outdated or it didn't help they failed I don't erase those comments it's not a defamatory statement that's an opinion um, but what I want to say is I'm fully transparent on, on this book I, I stand behind it a lot of people have taken this like recently like within a month or so and still passed those of you who fail, it's usually a language barrier problem. Um, or number two, you're not able to apply the rule of law to the current facts of a question. And you're depending on an answer and question combination that's exactly in here. Guys, um, none of there are no questions that I'm aware of in this book that are on the state exam. You, I can't do that. That's <laughs> I can get in, in, in deep trouble if I have the same questions. Okay, so without further ado, what what can you do? Um, just listen to this video. There's not much more to do, but just listen to this video. I do have some suggestions. Um, there's a new component or a new testable area, um, and it's the the study material is actually in the Powers to Arrest booklet. Get make sure that you guys have the the newest edition. I'll leave a link in the description box below so that you could check out the newest edition. Basically, they want you to know what proper de-escalation steps are. Um, what is a duty to intercede or intervene? And also um, there's some like cultural diversity questions as well and inclusion. Um, diversity, inclusion, these are all uh, familiar topics to law enforcement in the last couple of years, but uh, now BSIS has made it mandatory that um, qualified managers understand what these concepts are. Um, and all you guys have to do is read it in the Powers to Rest manual. It's directly from the source. So as a reminder, read up on de-escalation, read up on inclusion, read up on cultural diversity, read up on duty to intercede. All of these topics are at the comfort of your computer or your library. Just look at the most current Powers to Arrest booklet. And once again, I'll leave a link in the description box below. That's one way that you could study. Another topic that's come up is um, armored vehicles. I think two people reached out to me. They feel like I didn't cover armored vehicles in this book. And that's true. I didn't cover armored vehicles. So I'm going to cover it. Um, I'm going to cover it right now. Okay. So basically the California Highway Patrol governs the licensee. So if you are the security company owner 
and you want a license, um, or you, you're going to be the owner, you want a license, you apply at the California Highway Patrol. And basically what you're applying for is a special purpose vehicle. Now you have to ask yourself first though, is um, are you going to be an armored contract carrier? If you are an armored contract carrier, um, that would mean that basically you're the PPO, you're the security employer, and you need to apply to the California Highway Patrol. Now there's two, um, there's two agencies that have authority over armored contract carriers. That's the California Highway Patrol and the Public Utilities Commission. Public Utility Commission, also known as PUC, P-U-C, or CHP, also known as California Highway Patrol. That's where you would go. Now, you might be asking me, oh, I, I don't want to skip. So let me just talk real quick about what defines an armored vehicle. Um, and I'm reading from my notes here. Basically, an armored car or armored vehicle is a vehicle that's equipped with prote protective materials on the front, the sides, or the rear to safeguard occupants from missiles discharged from firearms. What the hell? Missiles discharged from firearms? So basically, if you have an armored vehicle and that protective, and it's armored because there is like maybe the front windshield has um, your bulletproof glass or bullet resistant glass, or maybe the sides or the rear. Whenever you put any protective barrier on one of these vehicles, um, and you, your guard has a, a deadly weapon, right? Um, that could be even a knife, right? That's over two inches. Um, it could be a baton. I, I don't know why you would have a baton or a knife if you're an armored contract carrier. I mean, you should have a firearm. But if that's if that's you, um, and you provide armored vehicle service for hire, so maybe you like transport something, um, then basically you need to be registered with the, the highway patrol. And actually you're saving yourself like a lot of money if you go that route. Um, some of you might be, I don't know, transporting. Um, I have to be careful what I say because I could get demonetized. The green leaf that's prevalent in California. If you're transporting the green leaf, in a vehicle that has any type of armor, any sides, um, that would probably classify, you would probably be classified as armored contract carrier, okay? Now, what happens if you operate an armored vehicle uh, without CHP approval? It's gonna be punishable up to one year in county jail, um, a fine up to $1,000 or both, that's California Vehicle Code 21713. Um, okay, as for, Going back to the guard, um, what do you need? Well, I'm not going to debate with BSIS. I'm not going to debate the fact that they don't have a lot of authority um, as to regulating these armored vehicle guards because they kind of wrote away their authority, and the authority is it, it just operates in a gray area. But I'm not going to get I'm not going to get on my high horse and and talk about that. Um, I did reach out to BSIS and they replied that armored contract guards um, have to have a guard card and they have to have the BSIS firearms permit. So they need to have two. They don't need to go through the 32 hours of security guard skills training. Um, all they need is a guard card and a firearms permit. Those two things and they can work for armored contract carrier. That, that, that's all you got to know. Okay, that, that, that's it. What's important to realize, once again, I know I'm being repetitive, is the security company is basically governed by the California Highway Patrol because it's a special purpose vehicle, whereas the guard is um, governed by BSIS. So that's the way it works. It can always change. Um, there's some crazy exemptions. If you're armored vehicle guard, um, you might actually be shocked if I explained some of the exemptions to you, but I don't believe any of that is testable material. Um, currently, I am currently revising the private patrol operator. Um, come like the second or third week of January of 2025, I'll have the third edition out there, which will explain all of the exclusions, okay? So I didn't forget about you guys. Um, pretty soon I'll have the updated version. This version, and I'm gonna, make this a surgeon here. Um, there's no guarantee that you're going to pass, but this book, even in 2024, 
probably even 2025 without any revisions will most likely help you pass. It's, it's not a guarantee. It's a surgeon that I make with the disclaimer, it might. I don't know if you're going to pass or not. You're the one taking the test. So this information is really relevant. Um, make sure you look at all the comments on Amazon. People put positive information on there, positive reviews. And I leave the comments open on my YouTube channels whenever I discuss the private patrol operator exam. Okay, so this book is still available on Amazon. Uh, come January 1st of 2025, I'm going to have the updated version. Well, maybe the third week. Okay, and I am including some of the business profession code section in that book. I had writer's block for the longest time, but I'm in like some trance where I have to have to finish this. Okay, so onward. Um, give me one second here. I know that some of you are applying um, for a qualified manager in California because you want to open a security company. Or maybe you want to be attached to one. Um, AB 1244 is a law that is a bill that we lost. I hate to say this, but we didn't we didn't win in the opposition of it. There's a lot of money that was pulled uh, to get this bill passed, and I've done like 12 videos on that already. I'm not going to go on a high horse talking about that bill, but it's law. Um, we appealed. We made appeal to the BSIS chief with one of my clients, and we were not successful. Um, we got a whole like two-page letter. The BSI chief did spend some time on this letter um, because she was explained that um, a lot of people are going to be listening to her answer. And that's what's happening right now. You guys are listening to my answer. Um, we have more subscribers on this channel um, than, than the BSIS um, YouTube channel. I mean, we probably have over 9,000 more subscribers than, than them. Um, anyhow, if you have, if you right, if you right now, if you work, um, I'm sorry, let me, let me rephrase. The requirements are as follows. You need to have two years of private security or related experience. That experience needs to include, um, security guard duties, watchman duties, or related field. Um, and you need to have one year. So that's two years, I'm sorry, two years of security guard experience and then one year of administrative or management experience under a current and licensed PPO, private patrol operator. Some people are going to be discouraged. Actually, I think a lot of people are going to be discouraged because they're going to say, hey, I'm just a patrol officer. Or I'm just a security guard. My title isn't manager, supervisor. Um, well, I'm here to say this. If you are a supervisor, you are a manager. So all supervisors are managers, but not all managers are supervisors. All supervisors are lower level managers. And that's a caveat. You are a manager. If you're a supervisor, you are a manager, but you're a lower level, level manager. Just something to keep in mind. Um, so I saw an ad that's advertised by the Gadite Group. Gadite Group Incorporated. They're out of Van Nuys, it looks like or they have, an, they have an opening in Van Nuys, California. Um, I went to Indeed.com. I also went to SimplyHire.com and I found their ad. So the ad is for armed vehicle patrol officer. Armed vehicle patrol officer. And I know based on my work in the private security field that a lot of patrol officers are actually supervisors. But the... The employer does not describe that in the job description because in private security, it's expected that you pay supervisors more. I mean, come on, this job in Van Nuys is full time um, and it pays $23 to $25 an hour only in Van Nuys. That's almost nothing. Now, if they put supervisor, um, armed patrol officer, the expectation is that you pay them more. Now, I'm just making these assumptions. This may or may not be fact. Um, this is this this is what the Gadai Group Incorporated. Um, this is what they pushed out on Indeed.com and Simply Hire. And I'm not just I'm not picking on them. 
uh, what happened is I spent 10 minutes only on the job boards and I wanted to look for an employer um, or a prospective employer that's offering a job that was not by name supervisor. It didn't have the words manager in there where you do perform management or supervisory duties based on the job description. And this this job just caught my eye. It, just, it, was, simp it was a simple find. Um, I know that for the smaller, I don't know how big this company is, but I tell you this, for the for smaller companies that don't have a, a command structure, structure, if you are a security guard um, or a patrol officer, but especially a patrol officer, you're probably a supervisor. You are probably a supervisor. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go through the job description real, real quick and critique the information. Um, I found about 11 different job duties that is required of the applicant. Um, at the same time, I found out that about eight of these job duties, roughly eight, um, involve some type of supervisory or management aspect. All in all, 72% of the job description entails management or supervision. And this is just a patrol officer job. So I would make a good argument and now I do have a review service. The fees right now it's five hundred dollars, and January first of twenty twenty five, it's going to go to one thousand. Um, where I basically critique, review, analyze job descriptions, emails, um, go through interviews with the client, and we, um, I help my clients um, develop their application. Right, um, they put on their job description what they actually did and um, they assign what percentage that they believe um, is the most accurate based on their actual performance. So it says here, um, the vehicle patrol officer, and I'm just paraphrasing, the candidate must be able to work independently or as part of the team. Um, must be able to make decisions independently is essential. Now I might leave a link to the, this ad in the job description. So if you have to work independently and you have to make independent decision, decisions, aren't you, aren't you supervising yourself or managing yourself? Because many times with management, especially private security, if you're the one working independently and you're making independent decisions, I'd make an argument that there's nobody about really anybody above you or nobody overseeing you. Therefore, you are a manager. Um, it also says here to observe and make sh make sure that all security guards are in the proper company issued uniforms. If you're observing and you're making sure that all security guards are in the proper uniforms, you are supervising them. You're supervising them for compliance of meeting the standards, meeting meeting the policies and procedures. You can't just you can't just substitute the word supervise with observe and make sure. You can't just do that. Um, it also says security, um, you're going to be in charge of making sure security officers follow company policies and procedures as specified. If you are trying to ensure compliance, you are supervising and you're also managing. Okay. Um, it also says here, the officer must be able to cover post in case of emergency or last minute coverage. Okay, and that, go, that goes back to the 28% of the duties are not supervisory related. Um, also, it says officer will be working directly with GADIC Group and Corporate Management and HR Department to report employee misconduct, employee behavior that's against company policy and assist in implementing the appropriate disciplinary actions towards employees who fail to follow company policy. This also includes employer write-ups. Guys, I don't know of anybody that's just, just a security guard or just a patrol officer that issues write-ups. If you're issuing write-ups, you are a supervisor. And once again, if you're a supervisor, you're a lower level manager. Um, if you are reporting employee misconduct, okay, I could see that could be a, you could be not maybe not a supervisor, um, but come on. I mean, you're you're working directly with management and HR to report these issues. OK, so what happens if you were taken out of the equation? Can management do this? And if that's the case, why don't they do this? Think about that. Like 
if if they're the ones to report employee misconduct, employee behavior, why do they need you to do that? Well, the answer is simple because they're not performing that. You're what they're basically doing is delegating those tasks to you. So they're tasked with that. The managers of this company are tasked with that, but they delegated their task to you, who is just the patrol officer. Um, let's see what else. It also says um, you will respond to unusual or emergency situations using the appropriate de-escalation techniques to solve the situation and appropriate force, and applying appropriate force. Um, look, if you respond to an emergency situation, you, and, and you're handling it, right? I mean, they also expect you to handle it, not just respond, because part of response is handling the situation. Um, Basically, what you're doing is you're activating, I want to say, a civil incident command system. I mean, obviously, there's people that don't believe that private sector is involved in incident command, uh, in the incident command system. And I would argue, no, they are involved in it. Um, but here you're activating, you're basically activating an ICS, incident command system. At that point in time, you are the incident commander. Command. This is a, a term that's usually reserved for managers right and here you are the the, the manager um, what really gets to me also is you have to explain your supervisory experience if you're if you're not a supervisor you're not a manager why do you have to explain your work history as it relates to supervision think about that um, all in all i search the terms i did a word search and there is no discussion about um, that person being a supervisor. The only time that the word supervisor or supervisory pops up is when the applicant is required to explain their supervisory experience. So it almost looked like, and I could be wrong, I'm probably wrong, right? Looks like that this company um, needs a supervisor and they maybe modified some of the, the verbiage to reflect or for for that for that patrol officer to maybe believe that they're not a supervisor but th again that wouldn't make sense because all these a lot of these tasks involve supervision okay um, i think maybe they didn't phrase it a certain way because maybe they're they might feel like they're obligated to pay more but i don't know i, I don't know the get group incorporated they're not here to have a discussion with us um, i don't have them on an interview i don't intend on doing that um, for a simple vi a simple 20 minute video, but they can always comment if they would like. I don't even know that they follow this channel. Uh, but guys, the Gadai Group Incorporated is not the only company doing something like this. And I'm not saying that when you're doing something like this, it's something bad. I'm just saying that if you work for one of these companies, um, you are most likely, and you have a job title like this or job description like this, you are most likely performing supervisory duties and you should be able to use that experience depending on how you write it um, for your application in support of experience. Basically, your application for qualified manager. So um, once again, guys, stand by for my latest edition of this book. Be available maybe second, third week of January. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll do, it's gonna be an expensive book. It's gonna be, it's gonna be like $250. Sorry guys, like I, I had to, I had to increase the fees. Um, Cal Saga, man, when they push AB 1244, I think that they're, they, I, I don't think that this was their intention on doing this. Uh, but not only does this affect like people who want to start a security company and are not able to because they don't have a job title that starts with manager or supervisor. Um, this restricts the candidate pool to this. And because of that, um, less people, less people are buying this book. So I already took jeez i took about a 48 percent maybe even a 50 percent um revenue loss i took a hit on my my business i've been selling this book for seven eight years or seven years um and my revenue probably hit like an all it's it's been hitting an all-time low so i have to make up for that sorry all right guys if you guys have any questions concerns let me know take care i'm out